In this guide, we're going to show you how to save off tool paths. This is the last step that you're going to do inside the software before you send your file off to be run on your CNC. In this demonstration, we'll be using a pre-made file called widget 24 by 24, which will be downloaded and installed with this tutorial. To get started, let's have a look at our tool paths tab. We'll click there to switch over. And you'll see that we have five different tool paths. The first three use the same sort of tool and the bottom two use a different tool. If you hover over those, each one you'll see that it has the toolpath name and then a number and the tool type. The number refers to the tool number. In this case, I'd like you to note that if you're using an automatic tool changer because these are all set up to be number one. If you need to change those, just double click on the toolpath, edit your tool, and make sure you change the tool number to be appropriate for your machine. It's always important when we're looking at saving off tool paths, and especially when it comes to looking at a file you've never seen before, or one that you've had in the archive for a while, is to make sure that you preview your tooling so you know exactly what's gonna happen. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll click preview tool paths, and we'll preview all of our tool paths. And now that we've done that, and we're happy with that, we can go ahead and look straight down at our job and then close out of that. Let's have a look at our Save Toolpaths form. That's this icon right here. So let's just click that. And we'll see that we have a couple different options here. We can save off selected toolpath. We can save off our visible toolpaths as one file. We have the option to save off visible toolpaths as multiple files, and also to add to that group where possible. We can output tiled toolpaths. And we're not gonna cover that in this video. That's covered in other videos. So just take a look for tiled toolpaths and you will find a video on that. You can also go ahead and amend the toolpath name with the side of the job. In this case, it's a single-sided job, so we're not going to worry about using that either. Now, because we have one toolpath selected, we can go ahead and just basically save off the selected toolpath. In this case, it was the pocket toolpath that we had selected. One of the most important things you're going to do when saving off your toolpath is make sure that you have the proper post processor chosen for your CNC machine. If you're unsure of what post processor to choose, you can contact your CNC manufacturer. So we can drop this down and we have a lot of different posts available here for you to choose. In this case, I'm going to press G on my keyboard and we're going to use the G code in inches file format and we'll select that and then we can click Save. Now in this case, because the last place I saved off my toolpath was located in the same place that the demo file is located, then I can just save over top of that and off I go. And it asks me if I need to replace the file and I will, yes. Now that location is determined by one of the settings that we have set up. So let's have a look at that. If we go to Edit and go down to Options and go to our Settings, and we're gonna be looking down at general settings, and you'll see file dialog defaults. So we have three different options for this, global, operation, and job. Global is set by default, and that will save off the toolpath in the location that was last used. Operation means that you may have a spot that you'd like to always save off your toolpaths, and it will choose that location. And then of course we can save it in with the job and that's the same place where in this case, the widget 24x24.crv file is located. We're gonna leave it set to global right now and we'll just click okay and we'll close this down. If I'd like to save off multiple tool paths as one file, I can go ahead and manually select the ones I would like to have saved off together. Or what I can do is I can right click on top of one and I can say show show with this tool and it'll automatically select all the toolpaths with the same tool. And then I can have a look at my save toolpaths form again. I can choose the second one here, which is save toolpaths to one file. And because they all use the same tool, then I can go ahead and save that off as one file. And I can unselect those once I'm done. If you'd like to save out a selection of toolpaths that may or may not contain different tools, you can just go ahead and Choose the ones you'd like to save out. And you'll see here, I've got two that use an end mill and one that uses a V-bit. I'll go to my save toolpath form and choose visible toolpaths to multiple files. And what I'll do is I'll end up getting three individual files, one for each of these toolpaths. When I click the save toolpaths button, 
you'll see that I can type in a name. So I can type in a general name for this group of toolpaths. In this case, we'll call it widget. And then we'll just click save. And we go and take a look at our what it was saved out of our software. You'll see that we have three different toolpaths. They both start with the name widget, like I had told it to. It's been amended with a one, two, or three. That's the first, second, and third toolpath. And then with the actual toolpath name. If we'd like our software to take care of how it saves off all of these toolpaths, then we can do that too. We can go ahead and view all of our toolpaths and we can save off those toolpaths. And if we choose the last option here, which is visible toolpaths to multiple files, group where possible, then the software will respect our toolpath order and it will save these off into multiple files for us. So for instance, in this case, we want all of these toolpaths saved off. We're going to use our G-code post, post processor, and we're going to save off those toolpaths. And if we give it a new name, we'll call this widget. And we'll save that. And to see what's happened, we can just click Save again. And in that folder, we'll find two toolpaths. This one's called widget one to three, which means that this toolpath contains toolpath one, two, and three. The second toolpath has toolpath number four and five in it. And so we have those two toolpaths saved off and we can go ahead and run those on our machine. If you already have your toolpaths grouped up, you can save those off as a group if you would like to. Just make sure that you have the group selected, open up your save toolpaths form, have selected toolpath checked, and you'll see that all the toolpaths that are part of that group will be listed below have the proper post processor chosen, and then click Save Toolpaths. And you know you're on the right track when you see the file name is called Group 1, and that's the same name that I had called my group in my Toolpath Manager. If you happen to have an automatic tool changer, and you do want to save out your toolpaths so that you can take advantage of that feature of your CNC machine, then let me show you how you can do that. I've already gone ahead and changed the last two toolpaths to use a tool that's located in the number two spot on my tool changer. And you can see that just before the word VBit, there's the number two. So now what I can do is I can select all of those toolpaths, go to my save toolpaths form, choose save visible toolpaths to one file. And right away in this particular case, you'll see that there's an error. And that's because this post processor does not support a tool changer. So I'll just need to choose a post that does. So I'll choose a G-code post processor that's ATC, which is, means automatic tool changer. I can select that and then it will go ahead and say everything is okay. And then I can save this off as one file and run it on my machine with an automatic tool changer. And with that, that's the end of this demonstration.